watching Newsmaker Live on DBS with me, Kendall Burton, our guest tonight, Antoinette Joseph, the senior field social worker in the Department of Human Services. We're talking about some of the social issues affecting St. Lucia. The lines are open for your calls, your questions, your comments. We were talking about the 16-year-old um, who the, the caller alleges has been burdened with uh, four more siblings to take care of and um, mentioned uh, a worker, a case worker or welfare officer who was in charge of that case. In a case like that, and you mentioned that that person may likely not be with the department anymore, would that case not have been transferred um, to it somebody would, else? Would have we have a call. Let's take that call and then we can go back to, to answering the question. Good evening, caller. You're on the air. No, we've lost that caller. Go ahead. Like I was saying, if we are aware of any case like that, we do move in mm -hmm. and um, try to work with the family. But there's another challenge. Sometimes cases are reported and when you go to the place, the person no longer resides there. Mm -hmm. The person put a lot of internal migration within the country. Mm. It's a small country, isn't that? How difficult can it be to track somebody like that? Well, down? It's, it can be difficult because sometimes people move. Today they marshal. Mm -hmm. A few weeks down the line, they souffre when you're mm -hmm. looking for them. And people do that a lot because we do have cases where people mm -hmm. are moving between Denry and Viewfort and back and forth. Okay, we have another call. Good evening, caller. You're on the air. Um, Good evening. Calling to make a small contribution. Um, right now, I'm a baby woman at my home, right? Okay, I'm having difficulty hearing you. Can you speak up? I am a grown woman at my home, right? But uh, about it. Is the social services normal to stay with? I was 13 years old when I was out on the street. And I had four siblings. I used to be going up and down. I was going to primary school going up and down. At the time it was waterfront. I don't know where it is now. I had to send myself to school and my four siblings. And every time I was going there, they did nothing about it. They never even came to see where I was staying where I was being abused and I'm telling you something I was being molested my mother used to abuse me the father used to abuse me and even family members and they knew every single thing about it they took records they took, pa they took papers that write down my name my siblings name and they did nothing right now my last sister is 16 years old and she's pregnant they cannot do anything about that because right now that's an age of consent. That's what we see. But at the end of the day, who's going to take care of that child she has in her stomach after a few years? Because she's still a little child. Social services do nothing to help nobody. Nothing. Okay, Carla. Another dissatisfied customer obviously suggesting that um, you could have prevented a, a certain yes. situation from developing and that uh, certain steps were not uh, taken. She That's what I'm getting at least. She said the office was located at Waterfront. That could have been more than 10 years ago because when I joined the department, which mm -hmm. is 17 years, I did not join at Waterfront. Yeah, but that does not remove. So, no, I'm just saying yeah. because she said she came when the office was at Waterfront. That's what she just said to you. Yes, that's, that's what she said. All right, so maybe she should come to our current location because... Yeah, but obviously, she, obviously she's, she's, she's she grown up. No, yeah, but she said she's a grown up now, but mm -hmm. she said she has a 16-year-old, so that's her young child. And the 16-year-old so can avail herself. Hi, good evening, caller. You're, you're on the air. Hi, good night. I just wanted to make a small contribution. Mm. Go ahead. I noticed the caller before was saying about, you know, the division is not doing anything mm -hmm. to help. Mm -hmm. Hello? Yes, I'm hearing you loud and clear. Oh, Go ahead. Sorry. The division is not doing anything to help, but I just wanted to, you know, come into the division's defense and say that the division is actually doing the best that they can. The, there are at least eight social workers trying to leave the entire country at, well, you know, the service that she's talking about that you're trying to deal with, and mm -hmm. I, I would like to say that the Social workers, they are working really hard, mm -hmm. and if a case like that comes to the division, I'm pretty sure that it wouldn't be overlooked the way, you know, I'm not saying that she's lying, but I'm saying the division will not overlook it per se. Mm -hmm. In addition, we're working with the resources. I mean, the division is working with the resources that they have. Right. It, it could be difficult, and I mean, bashing them and saying that they're not doing nothing is like ev exaggerating the entire issue. Are you an employee of the division? Hello? 
Mm-hmm. Are you an employee of the division? Pardon? Are you an employee? No, I'm. I'm just saying I'm. I'm okay. aware of the services that they okay. provide, and right. I'm. I'm sure. I'm sure that they're providing a, a, a proper mm-hmm. service because I. I could tell that the resources that they are providing. Right. Yes, I'm an employee. Okay, <laughs> I appreciate that call. Thanks for calling. Pardon? Thanks for calling. Mm-hmm. Okay. Right, you were talking about some of the challenges, and obviously okay, that well, would be one um, of them. Well, I'm happy. Um, well, actually, somebody called to say that. Well, actually, I think the number is now nine, nine, nine. What would nine it have been ten years ago when that caller experienced oh. what she well, did? Well, ten years ago, it would have been less than nine social workers for the mm-hmm. country. So it would have been a lot easier for kids like that to fall through the the, the cracks. That's possible. Yeah. But however, um, okay, somebody's calling. Okay, go ahead, caller. You're on the air. Hi. Good evening. Hi, um, good evening. I'm calling just to follow up on the previous caller in terms of saying that human services is not doing all that it can. Mm-hmm. I think solutions need to understand something that is extremely important. What's that? It takes a community and a society to raise the children. Right. And the children that we raise, that is what is going to contribute to the welfare of our society. Mm-hmm. Everyone needs to take responsibility. Human services is one entity, one entity that falls under the Ministry of Health. Mm-hmm. The Human services, they are doing all that they can. I know personally of social workers who are working extremely hard. They have tons of cases, and it's few of them. They are servicing the entire island. Right. So understand that we, as citizens, we need to contribute to our society as well. There are many of us who are in our communities. We know what is happening in our communities, and we choose not to act. So we, as citizens of St. Lucia, we need to take responsibility. Human services is just one entity. So I really don't appreciate everyone coming down on human services and saying that they are not doing anything. <laughs> if you want more social workers, then as citizens, you need to lobby, lobby to your ministers, let your ministers know that human services, they are understaffed and they need more social workers so that they can effect the change that we need in St. Lucia. Thank you very Hello? much, Carla. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, before we go, let's talk on the, the, the subject of incest. Um, that too is an, another issue that has been touched and DBS um, carried a, a report mm-hmm. on the subject uh, some time ago. Let's take a look at the final clip tonight and then we get your comment and then we wrap up. The woman who for obvious reasons chose to conceal her identity says her daughter who we'll call Susie was touched on her breast by her aunt's husband. She says by the time Susie was 11, the alleged perpetrator had gone a step further, touching her in her private area. The situation, according to the mother, got worse when Susie, who was 13 at the time, was asked to go to her aunt's home to comb her hair. According to the girl's mother, the teenager's cousin who had accompanied her on the trip noticed that the child was biting her nails. That's when the aunt recommended bush medicine to treat the problem. According to Susie's mom, The aunt's 79-year-old husband requested that the youngster accompany him to get the medicine, and that's when he made a sexual advance. The auntie tells the husband, go at the back to take the canal leaf for her. So he invited the child to go to the back. My my daughter said when she reached, the man tell her, you yourself pick the canal leaf by yourself. And the man push her, and the man take out, she did not have, the man took out her, push her pants on the side, and the man put his penis by her vagina. For four years, according to the mother, Susie kept all of her emotions pent up inside until one day she opened up to her schoolmates who had noticed that she cried frequently. The mother of the alleged victim also told us that she had been to the relevant authorities but was told that her daughter needed to go for counseling before she could take legal action. The mother also told us that the alleged perpetrator was arrested but later released apparently because of insufficient evidence. She says the 79-year-old grandfather, who is the alleged perpetrator, has denied the sexual abuse charges. But three other family members, after hearing Susie's story, mustered up the courage to report that they had been molested as well by the same person. We also spoke to the victim, who was eager to tell her story. When I went, I was biting my fingernails, and she told the man that Faye wasn't good for the biting of the nails. So she told him to go and pick it for me. 
but he wanted me to go and pick it on my own. So he went first, he showed me the place. I went to the place, but when I was trying to pick it, I couldn't have reached it because I was too short. When I turn around, I see unzipping his pants, but I didn't take that for nothing. Then he pushed me on something. He pushed my clothes on the side and my panty, and he, and he pushed, he tried to push his penis in my private parts. It touched me, but he didn't enter. The ordeal has reportedly taken its toll on the youngster. Her grades have taken a sharp decline. She, like her mother, have vowed not to rest until justice has been served through the courts. For the DBS News World, I am Don Nicholas reporting. Now the Director of Public Prosecution has gone on record saying in many cases, these cases or these inst um, situations are settled out of court. Witnesses refuse to cooperate. What has been done or what can be done to, to address that situation? What can be done in terms of addressing a situation? Well, it would have to be looking at um, the DPP's office not um, allowing the parents to drop the cases because in the past, parents mm -hmm. would be going to the DPP's office to say that I no longer wish to proceed with the mm -hmm. matter. So it is in their hands to ensure that parents do not drop the cases. Okay, we're talking to Antonia Joseph, the senior field the social worker in the Department of Human Services, which has come under some pressure tonight. Um, so I'm going to give you the final word and the opportunity to wrap up by telling us um, or letting the public know um, what are some of the challenges that you work under and what they can do to help the department um, more effectively function. Well, some of the challenges also include where persons sometimes come in but they do not follow through with their appointments. Mm -hmm. Um, they sometimes come once, twice, and you never see them in call, and that is why recording and documentation is very important. Mm -hmm. So if you go to the files, you'd recognize that you call, you've been calling and trying to get into touch with the person doing the visits mm -hmm. and not finding the person. But in, in 30 seconds, what can the public do to make your work easier? Well, I believe the public can... Um, Cooperate in the sense that um, when a matter is being investigated, to cooperate, and also mm -hmm. in terms of the child abuse cases that the parents or guardian assist the children in the sense of allowing them to speak because sometimes mm -hmm. they tell them to not talk, you know, and also take the out of court settlements, mm -hmm. you know. But as um, one of the callers spoke early on, saying that we all need to be responsible because human services is just one department. Right. And we do have other agencies, NGOs and government agencies, so we all have to play our part as an individual and also as a group in society. Okay, thank you very much for spending time with us tonight. Thank and thank you for watching and for calling, those of you who did call. And we want to thank you again for joining us this evening. We hope you'll join us next week for another edition of Newsmaker Live with me, Kendall Burton. See you then. Good night. <laughs>